Yo, what's going on, everybody? It is straight out of Boston here, aka the King of Boston, and today we are back for episode 17 of the Utah Jazz Association, coming off of a round one victory against the Golden State Warriors in six games. The Jazz are here to take on the Denver Nuggets, and they get out to a 3 1 lead during the simulation in the series, so we enter game five with the chance to move on to the Western Conference Finals. That would be a great accomplishment for this team in just the second year of this association. We are far ahead of the pace that I thought we were going to be. Um, I really didn't think we were going to go too far in the playoffs, but if we made the Western Conference Finals, that would be incredible. But that is easier said than done. We're going up against a very good, a very solid Denver Nuggets team. It will be hard to beat. They're very good in 2K. They're very good in real life. One of the best seasons in franchise history. Looks like that Carmelo Anthony trade is really working out for them, really for both sides, honestly. I mean, the Knicks are much better off with him than, you know, with guys like Danilo Gallinari and Wilson Chandler. And the Nuggets, obviously, have excelled under their new team. So, anyway, the Nuggets end up winning the tip. And let's get right into this gameplay. Avery Bradley drives and gets a nice one-handed and one dunk to get an early 2-0 lead. I believe he would convert the free throw, so it's 3-0 now. J.J. Hickson, a new addition to this team. One of my favorite bigs in the league. Uh, it, it does kind of confuse me why it took so long for someone to, I don't know, just <laughs> at least use him effectively. I mean, he was, you know, he was decent in Cleveland. Sacramento waves him, I think. I don't know. I thought that was a mistake. I always thought he was a decent player. He's really proving it this year in Portland. But now he's on Denver in this game, and he is uh, really hurting us. He's going to really hurt our rebounding. But Eric Bledsoe going spin layup in the lane. He's got an early four points. It's 9-6. to six. Jazz on top. Ty Lawson with the ball. You know, drives right by Eric Bledsoe. Piss poor defense by him. Cannot afford that. Ty Lawson, maybe the quickest player in the NBA. Can't afford to play lackadaisical defense on him. Favors with the ball. Back to a cutting Bradley who's going to make the tough layup. Bradley has an early five points. You can see he's having a very good playoff so far. He averaged 15 points in the first round per game. That's pretty good for a guy who's not really known for his offensive game. Jordan Hamilton, fast break, pull up threes. He's going to hit those every time. you got to be aware of those. So now, Ennis Cantor with the ball gives it to Gordon Hayward. He's going to work in the post. One of our better post players, surprisingly, he finds a cunning Kawhi Leonard. And that's one of the reasons why he's better in the post than most of our guys. He's an exceptional passer out of the post, which is thing, something that I like. Anyway, Patty Mills with the ball. I believe he used to be on our team, actually. He ends up kind of biting us in the butt there. Gets a nice left-handed layup. And now it's 18-17. Ben McLemore with the ball. He loses it. Lawson on the strip. Gives it to Wilson Chandler. And Wilson Chandler, he always hits those pull-up jumpers in this game. It is ridiculous. But he gets the two right there. 19-18 now. The lead. The Nuggets on top. We're inbounding the ball. Kyle Korver doing one of his famous off-ball cuts. And he splashes that three home. So we go up by two. 21-19. Ben McLemore running the break. Do you see who's trailing? You know who it is. It's Kyle Korver. He's going to be hitting those every time. Kyle Korver, man. One of my best, best additions. It surprises me that he was a free agent for, like, the first half of the season. I mean, I know that he's not rated too highly, but he is so good in this game because, you know, the three-point shooting is ridiculous in this game. And I'm sorry if you want uh, you don't want me to take advantage of it, but, you know, if I don't take any threes. I mean, honestly, I don't really have any other three-point shooters. Kawhi Leonard's a below-average three-point shooter. Same with Avery Bradley. You know, at least in this game, I'm not really talking about real life so much, but either way, Kawhi Leonard with the ball. He's going to work on Gallinari, gets into the lane, finds Gordon Hayward, and Hayward puts it in. Hayward's an alright three-point shooter. He's not the best in the world, but he's an alright one. Andre Miller with the ball, another guy who can't shoot threes, dribbles it back out, finds Kyle Korver. There's that man again. The spot-up shooter signature skill is a key one for guys like him. He splashes home that three. Lawson finds Corey Brewer, passes it to Fareed, and Fareed makes us pay for jumping on his pump fake. He goes into the lane for two, and the Nuggets cut the lead to nine. Now it's an eight-point lead. Corey Joseph running the point for the Nuggets now, the backup for the Spurs in real life. Ty Lawson's going to hit that close-range jump shot right there. The lead's down to six. Now it's still down to six. Corey Joseph with the ball, finds Ty Lawson open. Back to a cutting Joseph. Good attempt at a block there by Gordon Hayward, but he could not do it successfully. So leads down to four. Eric Bledsoe with the ball. We got our first unit back in now, trying to get something going on offense. Bledsoe drives into the lane and gets the two-handed poster. Eric Bledsoe, look out. Avery Bradley with the ball. Look, makes him fall. Gives it to Ennis Cantor, and Cantor slams it home. Let's take another look at that one. Oh my goodness, I can't quite tell who that is, but that was a crazy crossover by Avery Bradley. Figured that was worth a replay. Now Eric Bledsoe running with the ball. Gives it to Derek Favors, who's going to hit the close range jump shot with one hand. A little floater right there. Derek Favors, once again, coming up huge for us in the playoffs. Now, 
that would end the second quarter so we're gonna go into the half we have a pretty big lead on the Nuggets we're up by 13 I believe that is so 51 to 38 our defense has done so well for us so far and you know we blew out the Warriors when we were closing them out in game six I believe the last series hopefully we can have a repeat performance of that Kawhi Leonard gets the mid-range jumper right there now Eric Bledsoe with the ball dribbling up the court going to work on Ty Lawson ends up kicking it out to Derek Favors and Favors is hitting that mid-range man I'm really happy with the development of Derek Favors mid-range jumper look at that huge dunk right there but I believe that's Wilson Chandler but Derek Favors mid-range jumper is something to watch out for I, I like having bigs who can stretch the floor at least towards the free throw line um, and I was thinking Enos, Enos Cantor was going to be the guy that kind of was able to stretch the floor for us a little bit. But it's really been Derek Favors. And, you know, I don't know. I, don't, I can't remember what his mid-range rating is. But he is really hitting that mid-range shot. And I'm really happy about that. That's something I love to do. And I'm just really excited. So, anyway, after Kyle Korver 3, we're up by 17 here. Eric Bledsoe with the ball going to work. Getting past Corey Joseph. Getting the nice tough contact layup. Great. I, I love Eric Bledsoe, man. I'm so happy with the way he's played and look at the alley -oop poster oh man i swear man avery bradley's like our best alley -ooper. i don't know what it is but he always throws perfect lobs you've seen in the last couple videos that was a really nice one he posterized and slammed it on wilson chandler's head but here you're gonna see an offensive rebound from that man wilson chandler wilson chandler's hurting us man he's good in this game a little bit overrated in my opinion but he's a good player in real life and when he plays and he's healthy he's a good contributor to this Nuggets team and a lot of people are saying that because of the Danilo Gallinari injury maybe he can step up his game and kind of show the 2011 Wilson Chandler anyway Brewer with the ball ends up getting the nice nice finger roll layup over the shot blocker DeAndre Jordan there good 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 play by Corey Brewer and we're gonna end up closing out the third quarter up by 16 points your score is going to be 72 to 56 so our defense has been absolutely amazing this game 56 points to three quarters we have to be happy with that so excited Corey Brewery though look at that really nice layup animation there Corey's had a pretty good year in real life and remember we did start this association right around the time after the trade deadline so there were stat updates and Corey Brewer certainly benefited from the stat updates he, you know, he's had a solid season in real life. He's kind of found himself finally after being drafted. He was drafted pretty high in 2007, I believe. Part of those Florida National Championship teams, the back-to-back -back ones. I am pretty sure I might have some information wrong on that, so don't quote me. But, um, <laughs> anyway, Ben McLemore with the ball top of the key. Ends up, look at this, ready? <laughs> he just found Kyle Korver, who stepped behind the three-point line. And look, we're going to do it once again. I don't know what it was, but look, they're just sagging off Korver. This is not the same play, I promise. <laughs> it's nuts. I think we end up hitting six threes this game, all six of which came from Kyle Korver. So, like I said, I'm not really cheesing the threes, in my opinion. Only at six as a team. All six came from Kyle Korver. Derek Favors with a nice up and under in the post there. His post game is much improved. Eric Bledsoe driving with the ball past the entire defense, and he's going to get the and one poster dunk. Crazy play by Eric Bledsoe. One of the most exciting point guards in the league in terms of being able to get up there and fly around the rim. Another tough, tough contact layup by Eric Bledsoe, and he gets it to fall. As usual, he's so good around the rim. So great having a guy like him. Now Kyle Korver doing some ball handling. This is a rarity. He's going to end up passing it off to Jason Smith, and Smith hits the mid-range jumper. One of our better mid-range jumpers, or mid-range jump shooters on the team in Jason Smith. And Kyle Korver gets a rare assist. Now Corey Joseph with the ball, trying to go to work on Andre Miller, whose defense has kind of deteriorated as his age has gone. And Corey Joseph is going to end up hitting the crazy pull-up mid-range. That's pretty sweet. Anyway, that is going to pretty much wrap up this gameplay. So we end up winning this game. We are going to move on to the Western Conference Finals. That is right, the Utah Jazz. Going back to the Western Conference Finals, I can't remember exactly what the farthest they went during the D-Will era, but I do believe they made the Conference Finals once. I'm not 100% sure. Either way, look at Kyle Korver's hair. How can you not like that hair? That is so perfectly combed. On a, oh man, look at that. Kyle Korver. <laughs> what a guy, man. You guys got to pick up Kyle Korver in your associations. He is crazy. He goes batshit crazy for me sometimes. It is insane. Anyway, you can check out the uh, post-game stats and player of the game highlights are right about now. As you can see, the team stats, we beat them in a lot of categories. Um, they only beat us in a few ones like steals and blocks. You can see there, though, we only hit six threes. All of them came from Kyle Korver. We only attempted, I think, three other threes by... Or no, no, it looks like we attempted more. Never mind. We just missed all of them. But, uh, man, Mike Miller was terrible this game, but it doesn't matter. Anyway, that's pretty much going to wrap up this video, so I thank you guys for watching. I hope you did enjoy. And so it's out. Peace.